uh, Brian Leary. I am President and CEO of Atlanta Beltline, Inc. When will we see significant private development along the corridor, and what shape will it take? Well, right now, you're actually seeing private development along the Atlanta Beltline. In fact, um, our organization, Atlanta Beltline, Inc., has been around for about four years. In that time, $1.1 .1 billion of new construction and development has occurred. So any place you see in Atlanta right now that a hammer is flying and a nail is being driven into wood, chances are it's within a stone's throw of the Atlanta Beltline. For instance, over on the west side, um, the area around Yeah Burger and Taqueria del Sol and the new development around the uh, White Provisions and Star Provisions, the West Side Provisions District, and south along Marietta and Howe Mill, that's all along the Atlanta Beltline. Over on the east side in Inman Park Village, that new development with restaurants like Parrish um, and Inman Park Coffee, all of that is along the Atlanta Beltline. But even more recently, this is the fall of 2010, we were able to, able to announce that City Hall East, a two million square foot building that is now vacant, that has been on the public tax rolls, which means being zero dollars, is going to be redeveloped. It's being purchased by a company called Jamestown Partners, which owns the Chelsea Market in New York and has done a number of developments here in the city of Atlanta. They're going to take that building from an empty two million square foot building to a mixed use building with retail shops and restaurants, office space, residential condominiums and apartments. And when that's done, it will represent um, taking the property tax bill from zero dollars, allow us to issue $30 million of bonds, which will generate four and a half million for affordable housing and allow us to do a number of different things along the Atlanta Beltline. Do you see, the uh, second question, do you see these, uh, these structures, the construction projects, and I realize a lot of them are rehabs, but are they, are, are, are they densifying the city? Are they particularly of a different nature than if they weren't along the Beltline? Absolutely. So the city of Atlanta has more people in its limits today than in its history. And that's quite a statement considering we lost people every single year from 1960 to 1996. And the Atlanta Regional Commission has made the statement that their projections show another 3 million people or a million people every 10 years coming to the Atlanta region. The city of Atlanta is going to continue to get its disproportionate and more competitive share of that number. The people have to go someplace. And they have to, in generally, probably go in density because we don't have the ability to provide more mobility within the city limits uh, through roads. So we're going to have to do it through transit. And transit supports density, density supports transit. So the stuff that we're seeing right now that I just mentioned over on the west and east side is much more dense than the traditional Atlanta development single family neighborhoods. This is multifamily, multi-level, you know, condominiums, apartments with retail along the street. Um. Can the Beltline encourage energy efficient, sustainable construction? And I'm wondering, uh, you know, particularly whether there are any standards in place or could, could there be any standards put in place to ensure that the development along the corridor uh, is, uh, say, lead or particularly uh, environmentally friendly? So the city of Atlanta has been working on a sustainable building ordinance for some time. And that leadership will continue to be driven by the city of Atlanta, the mayor. Uh, Mayor Kasim Reed just announced his sustainability platform. He wants to take Atlanta from a top 30 to a top 10 city in terms of being sustainable in this country. And part of that is a green building ordinance uh, that will probably start moving forward next year. From a Atlanta Beltline standpoint, we have a zoning overlay and a master planning process that's uh, gone underway. We want to provide a resource um, to developers to be green, to be sustainable, utilizing the inherent sustainable components of the Atlanta Beltline as the platform and a springboard for them taking that technology and that process into the buildings themselves. So we won't probably be able to um, enforce or uh, uh, import any of that onto and make it a requirement. And that's really where the city is providing that leadership. But we will provide the avenue and the support and guidance to do so. Let me just an addendum to that Sorry. question, I guess, is what, kind, what do you mean by support and uh, an avenue and Well, resources? serving as a resource. We have a tremendous set of partners both here at South Face Energy Institute, um, Trust for Public Land, Trees Atlanta, folks who have a great deal of experience working in the sustainable world uh, on green buildings and on green spaces. And so leveraging all of those resources and partnerships uh, to the benefit of development along the Atlanta Beltline is what we can provide.